I'm Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times. Few leaders raise more eyebrows and hackles than President Ahmadinejad of Iran. He's here in New York for the UN General Assembly this week. I sat down to talk to him about human rights in Iran and other issues. And Mr. President, tell me about Syria and what President Assad should do in terms of the uprising in his country. We have said that they must sit at the table of dialogue with mutual understanding and respect and resolve their issues. But Mr. President, in, in, in Syria, as you say, uh, clashes and confrontation made the problem worse, but isn't that also true of Iran after your re-election? In Iran, things were quite different and are quite different. In total, there were 33 lives lost. More than two-thirds of those killed belong to the security forces and innocent bystanders. Less than one-third were those who clashed with the security forces, with the police forces. So they were a very, very small minority. Now, President Ahmadinejad, for, for all the, uh, his prickly presence internationally, he's very soft-spoken, calm, he didn't get angry. The one moment when I thought there was just a a little hint of, of, of maybe sadness, just wash over his face for an instant, was I asked him about the famous photo of Neda Sultan, the young woman who was shot in the chest and bled to death on a street in Tehran. It was incredibly sad due to many reasons. First, we have proof that that scene was staged and she was killed later, at a later point. This footage was shown for the first time by BBC. Our security officers and officials had no information of such a thing. If BBC is willing to broadcast this film, this footage in its entirety, any viewer would be able to distinguish whether it is as we say or it is as they maintain. During our conversation, we clashed a couple of times when we were talking about democracy and human rights. In particular, President Ahmadinejad several times suggested that Iran is a better and more robust democracy than the United States. Who says that democracy is stronger in the United States than it is in Iran? Who has said that? Really, in the United States, people are sovereign? Really, are the people willing to spend their hard-earned dollars in Afghanistan and Iraq rather than being spent on themselves? Are they willing to lose their sons and daughters in foreign lands for unclear purposes rather than receive those funds for education and health care? In our conversation, President Ahmadinejad tried to be conciliatory at times. He was indeed even friendly on several occasions. But at the end of the day, he lives in his own worldview, which is so different from that of me and other Americans and Westerners, that it's hard for me to imagine any kind of a major uh, breakthrough, any kind of a major improvement in Iran-Western relations anytime soon.